say the guests there from uh, Alexis, and they are they have something called Alexis Next, where they focus a lot on the water issues. This is very important and, and absolutely great. And Frederick is among the absolutely best entrepreneurs I know of. So it's a good guy. Uh, he's supposed. To, are you there, Frederick? Yes, I'm here. Perfect. So I think we are ready. We can see your presentation. Good to see you, <laughs> Frederick. So we have a great audience here. We are all excited. We talked almost an hour about your presentation specifically. So, you know, <laughs> we've raised the bar. Take it away. Thank you, Magnus. Uh, great to, to be invited. Sorry, I couldn't be there. Uh, I, I remember when things were, were born nine years ago. Uh, great work you have done, uh, Magnus and Linda and the team. Happy to be here. Uh, yeah, so uh, as Magnus said, I'm, I'm um, working for a company called Aliaxis. Uh, it's the world's largest uh, producer of uh, water pipes. Um, and uh, they decided to put up a, a new division two years ago, which I'm the CEO for, uh, Aliaxis Next. Our mission is to find uh, solutions to the world's water challenges. Uh, find solutions beyond the current success of Aliaxis, a family-owned company, long-term ambitions. Uh, so a perfect platform for, for an impact entrepreneur like myself. Um, I will share a little bit of, of why it's so important to, to uh, innovate in the water space. What kind of challenges are there and, and uh, how could we solve them? So what not so many people no, is that if we just continue to use water the way we do, uh, we will actually run out of water within a decade in big parts of the world. So the demand will be much higher than we have access today. So, so we need to both reduce consumption wherever we can, but we also need to increase access. Uh, and this is not so many uh, aware of. We talk about energy crisis and so on, but there will be a water crisis. Um, if you can go to the next slide. It didn't work for me to click, so I will ask you to do it. Um, about half of the population will actually live in water stressed areas, meaning that we once a day at least will 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 um, have difficulties to just use water the way we are used to uh, use water today. This is already happening, big parts uh, of the world are already in this stress, but big portions will be added. So almost half the population will, will um, face it within this decade. Next slide. If we look at how do we consume water, it's important to know that if we are going to uh, find solutions to reduce water consumption and so on. So about 10% of the uh, the water we withdraw from from the planet is used in the buildings where we live and work if we go to the next slide around 20 percent of the water we use is used in the industrial processes where we produce everything we we consume except if we go to the next slide the food we eat 70 percent of the water that we withdraw from the planet is used to produce the food we eat. And here it's roughly a third of this water is used to produce the, the crops that humans eat, and roughly two thirds are used to produce the crops that we feed animals to, to eat uh, later. If we go to the next slide. Also interesting is that the networks humanity has built to distribute all this water is leaking, is leaking very much. So more than a third of the water that we push into the infrastructure is leaking out. Uh, and that is also a big uh, energy consumer because roughly 10% of the world's electricity goes to moving water with pumps. So, so um, it's important to look into this challenge as well. Next challenge. We think we take good care of our water uh, when we have used it, but only 20% is cleaned before we put it back to nature. Most of the water is just pushed back into the nature untreated. 
go to the next slide. And we also face more and more uh, extreme uh, weather uh, coming from the climate change. So either we have uh, no water in big parts of the world, or we have a lot of water. And, and we need to understand how to deal with this unbalance. Go to the next one. There are also 2.2 billion people. It's like a, almost a fourth of the population more than a fourth of a population that that do not have a pipe coming into their homes yet uh, so they need to go and get water somewhere the picture here illustrates uh, the minority of those those 2.2 billion pe people uh, so 800 million do not have money to buy uh, water they have to go and get it like this but actually 1.4 of those those 2.2 they have money they are middle class they would love to have water in their homes uh, but for different reasons, they don't, typically uh, uh, governmental issues. Uh, so if we go to the next one, the final challenge we are looking into is, is uh, the fact that only 1% of all the water we, we have on the planet is useful. So if you put yourself on the moon and look down, uh, you can think about how, how how the fuck can we run out of water? It's water everywhere, but but we can only use like one percent of it. So that's why we also need to look into how to to use the the the, the salty water on our planet. So if we go to the next slide, these are some of the challenges that that are out there. And and when Aliaxis decided to put up Aliaxis next. Uh, this is our purpose to to bring solutions to to the world's water challenges and if we go to the next slide we took full focus on uh, one of the un uh, sustainable development goals number six which is all about this ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all so we took the approach of, of how can we reduce water consumption? How can we add more water into the equation? And how can we make sure that everyone has access uh, to water? So these are our objectives. Go to the next slide. Uh, so we decided to put up a map for ourselves. This is our uh, solution map. We have the, the eight challenges that I showed you on the top, and then we have a uh, a set of solution categories, as we call them. Uh, seven of them are so-called no-brainers. It, it makes a lot of sense for a company like Aliaxis to bring solutions in these uh, categories. And then we have three of them that are more disruptive game changers that fundamentally could change uh, how we do things in certain areas. Uh, so, so we have we have those as our uh, guiding stars. These are where we are looking for solutions. Uh, how can we be smart in how we manage water in buildings, in industries, in agriculture? How can we uh, digitize and, and improve the infrastructure for clean water, wastewater, storm water? And how can we uh, look into how to bring uh, infrastructure to the emerging, uh, emerging parts of the world? And then we have the disruptive ones where we look for a completely new ways of producing things, completely new ways of producing food and uh, really disruptive uh, desalination solutions. We go to the next slide. Uh, the way we operate um, is simply we, we, we go out and find the best entrepreneurs out there already working on solutions. Um, it's difficult sometimes for a big company uh, that is really good at incrementally improving what we already have to innovate in, in adjacent and transformational spaces. I think many corporates can recognize that. Uh, so, so this is a model we have put up to, to tap into the entrepreneurs. So we identify them, we find ways to engage with them. We can either do a partnership. We can accelerate the partnership through a minority investment, or we can even acquire the company if that would make most sense. And then our full focus goes to growing these companies. So if we go to the next slide, 
I will just uh, show you our map, how it looks like today. We have so far uh, filled filled up with, with uh, seven, eight companies, something like that. We have um, uh, a few in the making. So by, by the end of this year, uh, we think that all these boxes will be full. Um, I will just give you some examples of what these companies are doing. So if we go to the next slide, we have uh, HydroPoint, uh, which is a US company. They they have a, an IoT solutions uh, that, that, that uh, capture data from how water is used in, inside a building. And they, they detect uh, if there are abnormalities through AI and they see if, if the building is consuming water in, in a strange way or, or so to detect leaks or, or abnormal consumptions. They also do it outdoor and to smarter irrigate the green, uh, green areas around commercial buildings and factories and stuff like that. And when they install their technology, typically uh, every customer reaches at least 20%, more often up to 40% uh, water footprint. So this is AI, this is IoT. If we go to the next one. Uh, CropX, similar solution, IoT, AI. Uh, you install a uh, couple of sensors in your, your fields if you're a farmer, and, and uh, that those sensors are reading the conditions in the soil transporting it to the cloud, combining it with information from, from, uh, from their platform uh, and, and to control irrigation, fertilization, pest control, and so on, typically reducing at least 35% of the water footprint. Next one. This is a very interesting solution for the leakages. This is a company we fully acquired. Um, they have a technology to put sensors on the infrastructure, listening to to the to the, what's going on in the pipes, so they can not only hear if there is a leak, they can also see how big is the leak and exactly where is the leak in this uh, infrastructure. So they put out sensors like a kilometer in between, and and then the information is sent to the cloud using AI to find uh, those leaks. Typically. Um, also reducing a lot of, of uh, uh, the water footprint. N next one is about uh, wastewater, uh, sensor looking into the wastewater stream and seeing what's actually coming there. And that's very much designed to, to detect pollution events. If, if an industry has polluted in the sewage, you can find them and you can sue them, feed them. Uh, and, and this is, uh, causing them not to, to do it again. It's like a, a, a very good way to, to um, restrict and, and uh, limit pollutions coming in the wastewater stream to protect the, the wastewater plant. And this is also a really good way to uh, um, improve the quality of the waters. You can actually re reuse it to a lower cost. The final example is around storm water. If we go to the next one, and here we see we, we also acquired a company fully. Um, again, IoT and AI uh, sensors measuring levels in, in stormwater ponds and uh, tanks and stuff like that to be able to, to understand uh, what kind of uh, volumes can we capture. And then having weather force work forecasts coming in and the AI is helping the system to understand uh, what needs to be done to be able to take care of this big storm coming. And, and without a, a solution like this, uh, it's like running a bit blind. With a solution like this, you can take care of the water. You can also uh, store it so you can actually use it as an uh, uh, access to water uh, later on. So, so take care of the water when it rains and use it when it's not raining. So. Next slide is the final one. And this was just to give you a glimpse of what we are working on, uh, finding the best entrepreneurs, uh, solving the world's uh, water challenges. So thank you for, for letting me share this with you. Thank you, Fredrik. <laughs> so it should be no surprise that this guy is an IoT pioneer. And it's amazing. I still hear today people asking, when will it happen or will it happen? No, but this is actually happening in a big way. It's IoT everywhere today. So thank you so much. I know you, you agree to that, Fredrik. <laughs> thank yes. you so much. Say hello to Latin America. I will. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye.